Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hopefully, you guys are all doing well. What a crazy day. An absolutely insane day we had after seeing the largest gap up with the queues that we've seen in over 630 days following, of course, several different earnings there with Meta and AMD plus a plethora of other names. Then followed by that, we had the FOMC meeting yesterday. And then after all of this, this afternoon, we had ourselves Amazon, Apple, uh, CVNA, uh, Mara, several other names there, Qcom, uh, Dash, Snapchat. We had names galore. Lore. That being said, guys, we did see a huge engulfing bearish candle with high volume that really came in near the end of the day. The overall volume here sitting right beside me was not that high just with hours to go before the market closed. And you can see an increase of selling stepping in before the end of the day here. So what I want to do in this video, guys, is very simply break down what the back half of this week could look for. I do think you should sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Now, of course, normally I do say, hey, look, if you're looking for more information, you can jump into the discord. But we have closed the door for the discord. If you would like to join the way Wait list, you can do so, but we are not accepting new members at this time because the team that we have right now is currently, as somebody described, cooking. The team is good, all right? It's, it's a great environment. I don't want to mess that up for anything. If you would like to join in, guys, feel free to do so in the wait list, and we will be opening up from those who are in the wait list this weekend after I can get the team settled because we're having a little bit of an insane week with the ups and downs. We're doing well, but I want to make sure that new members aren't going to jump in and get themselves hurt immediately. So just sit back, relax, guys, and enjoy this video as we try to break this down. So yesterday we see a significant gap up. I do think there was some manipulation, and not in a criminal way per se, but I do think the overall psychology of what happened is something along the lines of big money accumulating premiums down here. This is what I actually typed this out in the Discord um, two days ago. If I'm going to give it to you guys on YouTube now. Big money accumulating a lot of the cheap premium here. We saw the biggest gap up we've seen before with the SPY and the queues in a long period of time here. So I can actually pull up the queue chart so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here, okay? We had this huge ascending level of support that we've seen here all the way since October 2023, right? This is basically since the beginning of the bull market. We've been just pumping off this level of demand here. Bam, pump, every time we come down here, pump, come back down here again, fake up, breakout, pump, again, double tap, bah, bah, pump, and then here we're in that same place again here. Now, I will say the increased selling volume here is high, but we have seen higher the last time we came back down to test this level of demand. So I don't think that we have at this time fully broken down through support. It could very well happen that tomorrow at market open, depending on how earnings are in the morning, and depending on how data is first thing first in the morning, we do see a gap down and go. If we see a gap down and go, listen very carefully, the market will come down very hard. Now, gap down and go is meaning we will see a gap down in a negative direction. The market will gap down like so. I'll draw it out for you guys literally. You'll have one daily candle. This is today, right? The next daily candle will have a gap between and then it opens up here and you don't see any wick back up. You just see this level here being defended, which means the candle just goes straight down there. If you see a gap down and go below the previous week lows, which means if you're looking at 453, if you see the candle open up below 453 and just start going down, be very careful because I do think the cues could be heading back down towards roughly 432 here. And if I'm looking at the SPY, the same thing could be said here for the SPY. If we do see a gap down, I could definitely see the SPY come back down towards roughly 436. Following that, guys, I could be looking at 428 to 425. Now, of course, here are the downside levels. There is, of course, a positive side here, but I want to be very clear that this is a clear cut indication of a continuation towards the downside if we see it. All right, stop, pause the video, rewind and go back and listen to that, okay? Because that part is very important. If you see a gap and that gap is defended pretty well in the first 15, 20 minutes, be prepared for a significant increase of selling pressure towards the downside. I can see bulls trying to fight first and first uh, in the morning, depending on how the market opens up, but watch out for that, okay? Cool, going back to the cues here, guys. Now, I do wanna see, I do wanna see if this market can open up roughly within this previous day's range and start to see buyers stepping in here. Because right now, what I'm seeing across the board is a lot of fear in the market. Now, technically speaking, with a bearish engulfing candle there, high volume sell there, and potentially some very poor earnings coming in, I'm not gonna fight this too much, right? If the market is going down, I'm just simply gonna play puts. Today in the Discord, we had ourselves two different puts. One put with Tesla I had in the first 
15 to 20 minutes of the market opening, those puts ran for 350%, 320%, sorry. The second puts, I got in for a second time today, those puts ran for 105 to 125%, okay? We had ourselves an absolutely amazing day trading small size trades and just going with the flow without thinking too much about it. But I am always going to be watching for one of those significant rebounds or significant bounces because I do think, I do think that as long as we remained in this range here, I'm still watching for the upside. I know everything in the market is saying it has to come down and I'm aware of that and I will play puts with the market, but I'm gonna keep one eye for a potential reversal here. And the reason being is simple. Everybody right now is watching the downside. And anytime everybody's looking one direction, I will always just take a peek to see what the other perspective looks like, right? It worked out very well for us literally just yesterday where I had one of the best trading days I've had all year. And now today we had a, a I mean, today was, I only took two trades today, two trades today. And both those trades ran for over a hundred percent. It was a great day. To me, it still did not give me enough because of where the market is at this time to really go all in on going short back down here with the Qs to look for 432 to roughly 428. I'll start looking there if we get a daily candle close below the previous week lows here. Sorry, below the weekly lows here, which means I want a daily candle close below 454 flat. Right? That's what I'll be looking for for that significant downside. Outside of that, guys, let's take a look at several other names here. NVIDIA, after having a beautiful bullish day yesterday, we did see themselves also looking like it had a bearish engulfing candle here with, I might add, some decent high volume. If NVIDIA is going to continue to come down here, guys, I will be looking for a trigger, which means I'll be looking to see if we can get a push past roughly 102 to target a move back down towards 96 bucks here. Another name, guys, MU. MU we have been talking about for a long period of time. This is a name that I have been going actually short shares with since their earnings. That was all the way back here, all the way back here, right? Now, as you guys can see, for those of you guys who've been following the channel, you guys know that this was the only stock that I was actually short with in shares for a long period of time. And I am roughly at this point in time, the aftermarket, probably at roughly 30% on my position right now. I am looking to exit some at 100. The day low so far here is uh, 99.95. I did not get a full fill there, but I will. And I do believe I will. There's still more time here in the after hours. Um, actually, maybe in the after hours, I did get a full fill. I'm not sure. But that being said, I am still looking for a move back down towards 96 bucks here for MU. If and when that does happen, I will actually look to stopping short shares and potentially start acquiring them. If I do see Nvidia in around that range again, uh, this low range, I will also be looking uh, around that you know that 96 dollar range here. There is a gap fill for Nvidia for roughly uh, 101 down here towards 95. I will also start to look to blindly acquire Nvidia shares. I missed acquiring a lot of Nvidia shares down here. I, I think that was a mistake on my part. Um, for not acquiring shares down here. And I did miss a significant increase of roughly, you know, 80% in my account from just simply acquiring a company that was just giving mind blowing numbers out. I made a mistake, all right? I'm not gonna make that mistake again. And I can acquire shares here if, if we get the opportunity and I have no problem slowly averaging in. Even if this thing were to really take a bit of a dip here and turn itself back around, I would slowly get back into those shares and I'll be waiting until 2026 if I have to, to really start seeing some profit because I do think that they are still ahead of the game, okay? Now, this is a different kind of video, guys. I'm really just giving you guys my thoughts on the market and some potential upside here. I, I am still looking at some names to start looking at some upside. Um, I spoke to you guys about cannabis yesterday and take a look at this, right? This is a name, Aurora Canvas, that I think still has a lot of potential here as they head towards earnings. That if this market does bounce, I think this will be one of the best names you look at here. Already up 1% of the after hours. If this thing can get a break roughly over 630, I do think that the upside move here for Aurora Canvas can be significant. So there are some names that I'm still be looking at for the breakout. In the financial sector, guys, we did see some beautiful breakouts in the past, but a lot of those breakouts have been given back up. I want to watch and see if this breakout can come back down to retest and hold 
for potentially some more upside, but we're not quite there yet. I still want to see a little bit of buying stepping in there before we get into too many other plays there, all right? So those are the names I'm looking at right now. Um, tech overall did see a significant pullback, but some names look stronger than others. Google didn't look too bad here. Apple, after reporting earnings and being down uh, a little bit in the after hours for a second, did bounce back up very nicely. But, 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 this to me, this to me is questionable. I am still, even with the positive earnings, looking at Apple like a potential head and shoulder pattern here, and I want to keep an eye out for some more downside. Now, I do want to get the GameStop here as well. Can I suppose you guys about GameStop all the way back here? I said, be prepared for anything. Um, I do want to see a daily candle close above 27.67 to go long here. I went long. Um, it didn't work out. I mean, it, it was successful. It was, it was a green trade. It just didn't take off towards the 37, 34 level here. And we got a daily candle close below 27. I came back to you guys and said, hey, listen, it's not worth trading options on GameStop to me until it crosses back above 2767. In this middle no man's land here, I'm not going to touch it. Now we've seen GameStop come back down roughly uh, 13 15, 16% since that time period, and it's looking for this gap fill back down here towards $20 to $19. This little cup here that I have highlighted is where I'd ideally be looking to accumulate some cheap leaps for GameStop, some very inexpensive premium to go long here. Until we get that gap fill or pull back down towards $17.45 or a significant move back up above $27.67, I'm simply going to monitor, chart, and just keep my eyes peeled with this name here. But I would love to see something along the lines of a breakout over here or come back down test support over here to get an ideal entry to go long. Until that time, guys, I am chilling. AMC does have earnings tomorrow as well. We have seen a significant amount of consolidation here. We did see a little bit of a red day today, so I will be prepared for a move back down towards support. But as long as we're in this range here, there's nothing really for me. A break it above six bucks or break back down towards 430. And that's where I'll look to actually potentially get into some options. All right, guys. So that's the information I got for you guys right now. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Of course, if you want more information on training, guys, you know, join the wait list. Links in the description below. We will be opening that wait list up this weekend. Outside of that, I will catch you guys tomorrow in the pre-market or of course this weekend for some more breakdown videos. Okay. Much love. Deuces.